This is my current server. I use this as a VM host, a NAS, a Minecraft server, Gary's mod server, bunch of things really. But this thing is the definition of a shitbox. The specs by themselves aren't actually that bad. I'm running a Core i7-4790, 24 gigs of non-ECC DDR3, an OEM Dell motherboard straight out of an XPS 8700, and 10 terabytes of raw storage in a RAID with no redundancy, cause what the fuck is that? And it runs Windows Server. Oops. This was basically like the most budget of budget builds ever. I built this server four years ago because I needed a NAS, and it's received several upgrades and things like that since then, but it hasn't changed the fact that it's still kind of garbage. So for this video, my aim is to build a new server and fix all of these issues. I spent quite a while looking at different platforms, not knowing what I wanted to use at all. Do I go with C606, C612, C621? I didn't know. I was kind of just looking at boards. And then I ended up with this. This is a Supermicro X10 DRI-T, a dual socket C612 motherboard. I picked this board specifically because all the other ones had a bunch of features like mini SAS HD that I just didn't really need. And it has an X540 chipset, which means it has dual 10 gigabit LAN, which is great when I want to get a 10 gig switch someday. And for RAM, I went with 64 gigabytes of ECC DDR4, although that's soon going to be 128 gigs, mainly because I'm going to be hosting a lot of VMs on here and 64 gigs of RAM will disappear quite quickly. And now for the star of the show, the thing that I am most proud about, the CPUs. We have dual Intel Xeon 2697v4s, dual 18 core processors, and this is the most significant upgrade, and this is also the most amount of cores I've ever had in a personal system of mine. I'm also going to throw in this GTX 980 for some GPU accelerated building, so me and my friend can build the GTA 5 source code and have GPU accelerated building, and also just to pass it to a couple VMs and play around with it. And now for the power supply. I got this 850 watt EVGA for really cheap on Amazon, and it looks like it's gonna work just fine, maybe? I originally wasn't going to add a GPU in here, but now that there's a GPU in here, I might want to consider stepping up the wattage. I do have an 1000 watt power supply that I can use instead if this won't work. So am I gonna keep the original shitbox case? Fuck no. That's gonna go straight in the trash, it beats a crap. I did, however, get a really nice new case for the server. This case is way better. Not only is it an actual rack mount chassis, but it actually has hot swap bays in the front. RIP the Ansex 300. And to all the giga geniuses in my comments saying, oh, you basically just built a super micro server. Yeah. You wanna fight about it? Hey man, the case was cheap and the boards are good. What do you want me to say? Nah, but in all seriousness, this case was super cheap. I'm talking like 20 bucks which is kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure that the backplane itself is probably worth more or like the same as the amount I've paid for the entire case. And it came with a free Windows 10 Pro license. I'm not gonna use that anytime soon. And also for the new storage array, the plan was I'm gonna have five 16 terabyte drives in the front bays for a total of 80 terabytes raw, so I'm expecting to get like maybe 60 to 70 terabytes usable. And I'm gonna make sure that this has redundancy because you do not wanna lose data. But at the time of filming, I didn't actually have the drives yet. But by the time you're hearing this now, I do have the new drives put into the server with a new RAID built. It's all good to go. Okay, so now that you've met the new hardware, we're gonna take a step back and go to our old stuff because we kind of need to disassemble this stuff first before we can do anything. I kind of went like smooth brain and before I rebuilt a new server or did anything, I didn't back up anything that was on my RAID. So I'm gonna have to actually put all the drives in this server so I can then make a backup so I don't lose any data. And honestly, disassembling this system, I realized really how jank this was. I bet a lot of you are asking, why the fuck is there just a power supply hanging there? And also, why is there duct tape along the front of the case? Well, the reason for the two power supplies, at least, I just have a ton of hard drives in here, and I didn't have a way to power it off of that single power supply at the bottom. That power supply, by the way, is just an EVGA 500 watt. So I just took another power supply that I had lying around, threw it in the case, put it on a jumper, and just used that. And for the duct tape, I, the front panel was just falling off. Yeah, I've had this case for around 12 years or something like that. This was actually the case that I used in my first ever gaming build. Okay, now that everything is disassembled, I have all of the drives. Now it's time to actually assemble the new stuff. Starting, of course, with the CPUs. This thing even looks so cool. And it's even better knowing that it's 36 cores. Now, of course, for the RAM. And here are the coolers that I chose. These are from Cool Server. I have never heard of this brand, but my CPUs don't overheat under it, so I'm good. There's one thing I just noticed. That is not a standard power supply mount. Okay, so it's not the best server build in the world. You know, some jank is required, but... 
Oh, whatever. Now, it took me longer than I want to admit to get this thing into the case. I just ended up taking out the back plane from the front of the case, and then I was able to get the board in just like that. So I put everything else in, and after all of that, I had an issue with the power supply. On the power supply, I had this green light, but then I didn't see anything on the board indicating that it had power. And every time I pressed the power button, nothing would happen at all. So I went ahead and swapped in that Corsair 1000 watt power supply, and then it worked instantly the first time. Oh, yep, I already can tell it's gonna work. There's a light on the motherboard that wasn't on before. Dude, just like that, huh? Okay, so like, what the fuck is wrong with this power supply? I don't understand. Okay, so whoever had this thing before me set the date and time. We don't have to worry about that. We can see 64 gigs of RAM is being detected. Let's go to CPU configuration. Yes, dual E5 2697B4s. Let's go. So I had to remove the front hot swap bays to actually get at it. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna throw in my SSD really quick, my old Windows boot drive, uh, and I'll connect this thing to LAN really quick and see the glorious 36 cores in the task manager. There we go. So it shows my, uh, there it is. What? what do you mean? Boot menu, okay. Now we try Windows Boot Manager. It just kicks me to the BIOS. Windows is loading now. All right, I'm gonna hit the restart button. There we go. This looks so weird in a CRT. Oh, that looks really cool. 36 cores, 72 threads. Now I just need to get the drives put in and all set up uh, and install everything else back into the server. We're gonna reinstall the, uh, the backplane, actually, Clean it off first. Giant dust bunny. Then I'm going to also do in reinstall my HBA, and I'm just going to connect the back plane to the HBA using, you know, the cables. So I'm not going to be installing Linux on this server yet, just because I'm starting to run out of space on the camera. And, um, you know, usually while I record, I uh, just use the server to offload all the footage that I have already onto the server, so I can have more space on the phone to keep recording. Um, well, the server's on the table right now. All right, so now it's time to sort out our drive situation. So here's where things start to get a little complicated. We somehow have to stuff 10 hard drives in here. And this is another reason why my storage is super sketch because it is all recycled drives. Every single one of them, all recycled drives. And they're all just mismatched. All of these are the high capacity drives. And by high capacity, I mean like a terabyte or more. All of these ones, these smaller ones, are all 500 gigabytes. So I'm gonna put these four plus one of these in all the hot slot bays in the front. And then all the other ones I'm just gonna put uh, like stack over here inside. Uh, it'll be temporary. I am getting new drives. I'll get five 16 terabyte uh, Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives for a storage upgrade. So I won't have to worry about this for too, too long. So this is the only SAS drive that's like a decent drive that's in this uh, array here. The Dell Enterprise three terabyte. It's a SAS drive. I'm running an adapter here and that's why I had that HBA card in my old server. It wasn't just to increase the capacity how many drives I can have in that server, but it was also to uh, run this drive because I've had this drive sitting around not being used for actually quite a long time, was never actually able to use it though until about like a year ago when I bought that HBA card. All right, so I have all the drives plugged in. I'm back on Windows. I'm just setting all the drives I want to use to be online so I can get my RAID back up and see if my RAID died while I transferred everything over. Hopefully it didn't. Oh, there we go, we're back. But it's at risk. Oh no. In the vault, good software. I wanna run Cinebench on this thing. I only have R15 right now, and I'm not connected to the internet. So the highest is my 5900X. That's my CPU and my main rig. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. I didn't even take that long. I mean, granted, it is R15, but that's the only one I have available locally at the moment. I mean, I really don't have anything else to do right now other than like bring this thing offline, bring it back into the server room. That is definitely not the correct time. Um, it is currently 3 a.m. For anybody wondering, this is my rack right now. There's a PF Sense box. 
Here's my Catalyst. Shout out Catalyst 3750. This thing is great. I have this for like older machines because it has BNC and AUI and a bunch of other cool stuff on it. I have this small business switch. This is PoE and I'm going to use this for uh, some weird Cisco IP phone shenanigans. This server down here was like my first actual like server. It doesn't work. And also it's sadly kind of e-waste. It's LJ1366 and it came with E5640s which are four cores each. It came with two of them. Shitty UPS, but it works. This is kind of like a storage room and like a server. I don't have much space for my things, so it's kind of just all in here. I always leave the door open a crack, and the air conditioner is most of the time on, so there's really no need to worry about thermals. And if I do end up closing the door when I'm recording something, I get an alarm actually by PF Sense if the temperature sensors in the box go too high. So I know. Also, this catalyst spits out errors at me if it, the temperature's too high in the room. Here we go. Servers in the rack. Honestly, it isn't that loud that I thought it would be. All right, so I'm on my computer right now and I just updated to Plasma 6, so my rice is a little bit fucked up. It's a few weeks later and for the first few days that I actually got the server up, I kind of had no clue what I was gonna put on there software wise. I wanted to use a Linux solution because I'm gonna just say it how it is. I don't really like Windows that much, but then it led me down a rabbit hole of, well, what the fuck do I use? Because I've never tried using a Linux-based server solution at all. So I asked a few friends, and I was told to use VMware ESXi, Proxmox, Fedora Server. I just, I, I didn't know. I didn't really want my NAS to be virtualized, though. I mean, looking back, I don't really see why not. Like, I could 100% virtualize my NAS. So I ended up installing TrueNAS, and honestly, TrueNAS isn't bad, but I kind of hate it. I do like having virtualization and having my storage pools and things like that in the same place, and all my shares and stuff in the same place. I do like that. But also, I just kind of fucking hate TrueNAS. I don't know why, but I installed it, and I just had a bunch of issues. I actually had to install TrueNAS three times to get it working properly. Well, the first time, it just kept kernel panicking. I wasn't sure why. And the second time, it installed but the web UI just never fucking worked. So I am currently using all the old drives from the thing and my current RAID is not looking good, but this is just a temporary solution until I get the drives, which are coming in tomorrow. So I'll be able to put those in. So for VMs that I got up, I one thing I noticed really quickly uh, while I was trying to manage VMs and stuff like that, you can hit display and it will take you to like this little spice client in, in your web browser. And you, I had a lot of issues with this web spice. I, I don't know. One of the issues I kept having is if I ever to tab out and then tab right back in and click on it, it just would stop receiving inputs sometimes. Oh, see, look, yeah, I'm clicking and dragging, but it's not doing anything. There's this app called Rem Remena, and I just added it into here, and now I can have kind of a thing like this, and I could even full screen it and look at that. It looks pretty... Actually, this is really nice right here. I actually just built a whole workstation actually right behind me that is used now to interface with my servers and stuff like that. But yeah, I like this. This is pretty cool. So for VMs currently, you saw you just saw that I'm running the Minecraft server. I have this VM, which is called Green. And this Green VM is literally just open OpenSUSE. I don't know what I was going to use this for, but I just kind of set this up and just kind of forgot about it. And free PBX is, well, free PBX. This is just a standard PBX phone controller. But with all that being said, this is now the end of the video. And I feel a lot better now that I have a much better storage solution. It was kind of like always in the back of my mind for a while how jank it was. And that if one drive died, that was it. So I'm glad that I have a much better solution for this kind of stuff now. Anyway, hit like if you like the video. Dislike if you hate powerful servers. Or if you just hate me. I have a lot of videos coming out soon, so definitely stay tuned. This is just a standard PBX phone controller. Dude, fucking Discord notifications, man.